Hi everyone and welcome back to Doc Off Call. My name is Dr. Maddie and I'm one of your doctors from the UK. In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down one of the fight scenes from the new Jojo Part 6 series that's recently aired on Netflix. Now, so far, I think the show's been pretty awesome and it's lived up to its bizarre title, but let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts were. But if you're not caught up on all the other parts of the Jojo series, you can catch some of my other fight breakdowns that I'll leave up in a link just up here. Now, for anyone who hasn't yet gotten around to watch the series, I need to let you know that there are some spoilers ahead. For everyone else who's stuck around, please don't forget to like this video. If you're ready, let's begin. So in this first scene, we find Jolene coming up against a stand user who's able to manipulate gravity in creating space-like conditions in this room, leaving both herself and weather report floating around. Ah, this is pretty accurate, you know, gravity plays a really important role in the circulatory system. It helps assist blood flow from the heart all the way down to the peripheral tissues. And let's not forget that blood makes its way back up to the heart through compression of your calf muscles against the deep veins, as well as the presence of one-way valves in these veins to prevent blood pooling in the feet. Now, when you're weightless in zero gravity, you're not contracting these muscles and thereby the mechanism that returns blood to the heart isn't being utilized. As a result, blood pools in the head and the legs, which swell, and we call this edema. Now, edema comes from the Greek word iodin, which means to swell. And it's interesting because some astronauts who've experienced this describe that it's very similar to the sensation you get when doing a handstand. Again, this is very true. Our brain has the ability to control the amount of fluid we keep in our body through the release of several different hormones. Now, the main hormone involved in this process is something called ADH, otherwise known as antidiuretic hormone. Now, this hormone is released by part of the brain called the posterior pituitary, which is a small grape-sized area that's at the base of the brain. Now, ADH release is triggered by factors like dehydration, it works on the kidneys to help you to retain water and allow you to produce more concentrated urine. And the opposite is also true. If there's too much fluid within the body, ADH release is stopped, and as a result, your kidneys are able to expel more fluid through producing more dilute urine. <laughs> Ah, okay, I'm guessing that this stand is producing a low-pressure environment, mimicking that that you would find in space. Now, this low-pressure environment would be acting in a suction-like manner, drawing out all the liquids like blood and urine, and gases like oxygen from the human body, a bit like opening up an airlock in space. <laughs> Hmm, so yes, you would suffocate in the vacuum of space as air is dragged out of your lungs through a negative pressure gradient. But the last thing you would want to do is hold your breath as the oxygen found within your lungs would naturally want to expand in this low pressure environment, which could cause your lungs to rupture. Now, although it's quoted that it takes up to 90 seconds for the body to die from asphyxiation, you're unlikely to be conscious for those 90 seconds because there would be insufficient oxygen reaching your brain to keep you awake. <laughs> Now, 
Now the process that weather report is alluding to in this scene is something called ebullism. Now ebullism is the spontaneous evolution of liquid water and tissues to water vapour at body temperature when the pressure is low enough. Now there's not really any conditions on earth where you're likely to experience this. But in space this would result in the moist surfaces such as your eyes and tongue to vaporise. A horrible way to go. <laughs> of course they did. They turned the remaining air around them into spacesuits. But I guess this would pressurize the air around them and help to offset some of those processes that we spoke about earlier. <laughs> Interestingly, this scene got me thinking about the technology of spacesuits and how much a spacesuit would cost. And I looked it up and it's in the range of $500 million. Now that's an astonishing amount of money for a suit. But if we think about the amount of technologies that are derived from building this suit, it may well be worth it. Some of the technologies that have come from space travel are things like water filtration systems, CAT scans, portable computers, insulin pumps, artificial limbs, and scratch-resistant lenses, just to name a few. Okay, so it seems like their suit's going to last them for up to two minutes as they consume the oxygen surrounding them. Now, the human body consumes up to seven to eight litres of oxygen per minute when at rest, but this can stretch all the way up to consuming 100 litres a minute with extreme exertion. And astronauts carry two cylinders of concentrated oxygen, which can carry up to 800 litres. So depending on your level of exertion and the control you have over your breathing, you could consume this quantity of oxygen anywhere between 15 minutes all the way up to three hours. <laughs> So that's cool, they figured out that the stand's attack range is 20 meters. And I don't know about you, but this character kind of reminds me of Seko from Jojo Part 5. I mean, I don't know, is that meant to be his hair or a hat? Aha, so the reason that the barrel has jetted off like this is because the air particles found within it would be expanding away from one another, much like how oxygen would be trying to escape from your lungs. And so when this barrel is pierced, you get a sudden release of pressure, which forces it to become a projectile, a bit like a balloon, which is very creative. And this scene where Jolene intentionally cuts her suit to propel herself towards weather report kind of reminds me of what Matt Damon did to try to escape the clutches of the atmosphere on Mars in the movie The Martian. Okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't really understand exactly how Jolene's stand works in comparison to some of the other stand users in this season, but I guess it's a bit like Kakuin's from the previous JoJo seasons. But it's clever how she's tried to anchor herself against her enemy, almost using her stand like an umbilical cord. And this is very similar to the safety harness that astronauts use to anchor themselves to the spaceship if they need to go outside. <laughs> Oh, 
Ooh, okay, and what we're seeing here is that the gases found within the body are beginning to expand in the body's tissues. Now, it's said that the body's size can almost double with this process, but fortunately, your skin is elasticated to the point where it can contain it and not explode. But still, this process would be incredibly painful with your tissues and nerves getting pulled apart by the expanding gases. <laughs> Ah, okay, so what we have here is hydrogen peroxide and manganese dioxide, and it makes oxygen as a byproduct. Now, I remember when doing A level chemistry, we used to do similar experiments like this, and I can vouch that this does work but not to the dramatic extent that we're seeing on the screen. Surprisingly, you can perform this type of reaction at home with the combination of hydrogen peroxide, yeast, water, food coloring, and some dish detergent. And of course, Jolene is saved here by weather report, shrouding her in his spacesuit. But now he's subject to the effects of these expanding gases in his tissues. Now, seeing this scene again, it does remind me of another condition where you can get gases escaping from the tissues like this, and it's called decompression sickness. It actually affects deep sea divers. I've given a bit of an explanation about this in one of my previous Barkey videos, which I'll leave a link for just above. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a high pressure punch to the face. And it's funny because he really should have seen this coming. Because we know that in low pressure environments, particles like to spread out and be as far away from one another as they can be. Now, a sudden change from a low pressure to a high pressure, of course, is going to bring everything colliding back together, and thereby Jolene's fist with his face. <laughs> And after that barrage, I'm guessing that's the last we're going to see of this character. Rest in peace. Okay, I hope you found today's video enjoyable and educational. I'm hoping to do a few more videos on the JoJo Part 6 series. If you have any suggestions for any fights, leave those down in the comments below. Otherwise, please do give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss out on any more JoJo content like this. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.